Hi, Phyllis here from southernfrugal.com. Today I'm going to make a lemon meringue pie. Now this is going to be the recipe that was on the back of the Comstock uh, cornstarch box. And uh, everybody really made the same recipe because it was right on the back of the box in the 1950s. And I really think that's where the lemon meringue pie got started, really, uh, because everybody I knew made it back then. My mother made it, my grandmother made it, my aunt made it, you know, everybody made that uh, particular recipe and it was absolutely delicious. And uh, now I, I looked at a whole bunch of the recipes on the internet for the lemon meringue pie and there's a lot of different variations and I'm sure all of them are great. But anyway, I'm going to do the 1950s version of it. I think it's very classic and uh, it's kind of like the banana pudding in the 1950s and the pineapple upside down cake. Uh, just everybody was making them. Now, in the 1950s, most women didn't work. They stayed home. So, uh, and you, you really, you could buy cake mixes, but you couldn't buy like canned uh, lemon pie filling. Now Comstock, and I'm not sure if it's even the same company, puts out um, you know a cherry pie filling and apple pie filling and, and the uh, lemon pie filling. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's the same company or not, probably it is, but uh, now it's like Argo and the Clabber Lady I think is one of them. And anyway, there's several different brands of cornstarch now. but. Uh, I remember it being the Comstock, and I even remember the picture that was on the front of the box, but it always had that recipe for the lemon meringue pie right on the back of it, so we're going to make that one today. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do, and we'll be making a pie crust too, of course, but I wanted to show you how we used to do the lemons back years ago before this was invented, okay? Now y'all all know what that is. It's, it's a, a, a grater, a, a planer for citrus. And uh, I think I got this at Bed Bath & Beyond. But here's the difference. This is gonna give you the peel off the lemon or orange or lime. But this is gonna shred it up really fine and you're gonna get a lot more of the flavor from the lemon than you will from this. Now, if you only have this, you'll have to use that. But I would encourage you to get one of these, and when you get them, you can get them for about $5 at Walmart. Just be sure you get the stainless steel kind so you can put them in the dishwasher. All right, so we're gonna grade uh, the peel off one of the lemons. Now, you don't wanna go deep at all. Once it gets to that little white, pithy stuff, you want to make sure you stop there. Don't don't uh, grade into that. Now see how quick it went into that? So you want to do it real light all the way around. And this recipe for lemon meringue pie calls for the, the grated rind of one lemon. Now this is a fairly large lemon, but I'm going to still put it in there because uh, a good part of the taste in the lemon meringue pie is going to come from grating this one lemon. Let's see, I probably already got one third of it done and I really don't have that much in there, but it's going to be very fine and you're going to get a lot more of the flavor than you will from using the planer. Now if all you have is the planer, then you have to use that. And of course the planer is a lot, lot easier than doing this. But they didn't have the planers in the 1950s. And some, some things from way back then are really a lot better than the way we do things now. And again, you don't want to get into the white because that really will uh, cause it to taste bitter. If you get in, you just want to get that very, very top peeling off of it. Very, very top. Okay. Let me get a little more of that. Okay. Now let me turn it 
turn it down so you can see that. I see a lot of it is still on the uh, grater. That's how fine it is. So I'm just going to scrape that off with my knife as much as I can get off. And of course there's some down inside too. So I'll take my knife, see? And it doesn't have to be a lot, but this is where all that great lemon flavor is going to come from right from your grated lemon rind. All right, now I'm just going to knock some of that off. All right, that's about got it. So there it is. That's all that's going into the pie that little bit, but that will be enough to really flavor it. All right, I'm going to get set up to do the pie crust, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back, and uh, we're ready to make the pie crust. And this is the same exact pie crust that I put with the uh, coconut cream pie. So it's one cup of all-purpose flour plus a fourth of a cup about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of baking powder. Just kind of mix that all in. One third cup plus two tablespoons of Crisco. And that's just regular Crisco, not butter flavored or anything. So I'm just going to get that out of there. And I'm going to, of course, do this with my fingers because I think it's a lot, lot faster. So mix it up until it gets to about a small pea size and then you'll be good to go. Now the liquid in this is going to be one large egg yolk and three tablespoons of cold water. It doesn't have to be ice water, just you know, cold water. All right, that's probably good enough right there. See how fast that was? A lot faster than cutting it in with the, the little shortening cutter thing. All right. One egg plus three tablespoons of water, and you just want to beat that a little bit. Pour it right down in the middle. And just use your hands and start mixing it up. You should mix up fairly quickly. Now this crust also, you don't have to, you know, put it in the refrigerator and, you know, let it cool for an hour and all that stuff. You can just mix it up and roll it out. And it will come out flaky and nice and with a great taste too, I might add. in together. Now, I'm going to roll this out using saran wrap or plastic wrap, and I'm going to do that so I don't have to use any more flour, because the more flour you use, and that's going to kind of change the taste of the crust. Set that over to the side, and just mash it out into as much as you can get it into a, just a round you know, the little disc shape. Put it down on your saran wrap, mash it out a little more. All right, I'm going to use a little more of the saran wrap right on top of it. It usually takes, of course, two strips. Now I'm going to 
rinse my hands off. Alright, we're now ready to roll out the uh, crust. And see how quick that went? It just it really goes very fast. Just start in the middle and roll out. Just keep turning your rolling pin around and around. Now, notice I didn't use any extra flour, none at all. And this uh, saran wrap or plastic wrap makes it a lot easier to put it into the pie plate. A lot, a lot easier. And I'll roll it out just a little bit larger than my pie plate. Now I'll show you my pie plate. I got that just the other day at Walmart and I had never seen it before in there. It's an uh, extra large Pyrex pie plate and I just really, really like the uh, height of it. All right, I think we've about got it here. Now, any time that you know you need to, you can always patch your crust. It's very easy to patch them. It's kind of hard to mess up a crust, and even if you do, you know nobody's going to see it because it's going to have pie filling in it. So let me see. There's my new pie plate. See how deep that is? It's probably a half inch deeper than a regular uh, pie, and it's got the uh, edges, so I guess that would help with fluting of the uh, crust. So that looks okay. Now I'm just going to take off the top layer of the plastic and discard that, and hope that this works. Push that in a little bit there. All right. Ungreased pie plate, Pyrex. All right, see how I can just pick it up? Almost like pizza dough, huh? And just gently put it down in there. Now, the thing that I like about the glass pie plates is that when there are air bubbles, you know, down there under the crust, you can actually see them, so that helps. All right, now that I've got the crust in there, I'm going to remove my plastic. I'm not used to having a pie plate this big, as you can tell. All right, so I'm just going to mash that down. I'm going to go ahead and stick it all around, pierce it with the fork. A whole bunch of times around the sides. Now if I pick it up and I look under here, I can see exactly where there are air bubbles. I can just mash this out because I've already pricked it. Now, I'm going to do some patching here. I'm going to take this little section and put it right over there. Again, I'm not used to a pie plate this big, so I'm going to have to make my, roll out my crust a little bit larger. See how easy it is to mend it? So I'm going to get some of this over here. Put it right there. Very easy to mend it. Get it all kind of even. All right, I think we got it. Get that off a little bit. Put some over here. All right, now I'm going to mash it up to my top edge. See with the uh, pie shell this big, I really don't have to cut any of it off. All 
Now, this is the way my mother did the pie crust. Sometimes she would let us do this for her. Went around like that. Just with a fork. Just again, if you see any little places where there's air, just yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, don't worry about the filling running through because it really won't, okay, when you put the filling in. All right, now I'm going to even it up a little bit. I'm very excited about this deep pie dish. I really am. Okay. Now, I always remember my mother doing this. There went my, there's my ice maker. I've got a loud ice maker, sorry. Now, I, every time she did this, we, we would, my sister and I would sit at the table and watch her roll out the pie crust and make it. Now, her pie pan, of course, was one of those really old pie pans that uh, was really kind of black. But she would always pick it up and take a little knife and run it right under the edge there. And I would always say, Mama, why are you doing that? And she would say, Cause, so it won't stick. Now, I've never had one stick like that, but that was just something she always did. And you really don't have to do that, but I was just showing you what she used to do. And she would hold it, you know, balance it on her hand to do it. We were real impressed with that, okay? All right. All right, now we are going to bake this at 425 degrees for like 15 to 18 minutes. Now, pie crusts do puff up in the middle. Now, of course they do. But if you bake them at a high enough temperature and you watch it, what it'll do is it will rise up, but then it goes right back down. And if it doesn't, all you have to do while it's still hot is just push it down. So, I mean, I don't put any aluminum foil in and put beans or those, you know, steel balls in there. We, we just, there was nothing like that in the 50s. I mean, people just didn't do that. So, I don't know where that came from anyway. But anyway, I don't mean to say anything about the people now that are doing it, but I like my pie crust brown everywhere. And if you put aluminum foil in it, it's just not going to be that way. All right, we're ready to put this in the oven, and I'll get the stuff set up to make the filling. Be right back. Okay, we're back, and my pie crust is already done. Just a, just lightly brown, but it's browned all over. And it, it really didn't puff up in the middle, so I'm good to go there. So, for the filling, you're going to need one cup of sugar. One fourth cup of cornstarch, and it just you need to mix that up, you know, before you even turn your burner on and let the sugar kind of get the lumps out of the cornstarch. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the burner on. I'm going to go ahead and turn my burner on medium high, just because this is a slow burner. You're going to add one and a half cups, just regular tap water. Now, you don't want it hot. You just want regular tap water. And we're just going to whisk this around until all that cornstarch is dissolved and the sugar is dissolved. And it thickens up. So it shouldn't take it too long. But... I think I'll just be back as soon as it thickens up. And then we're going to add the uh, three beaten egg yolks to it, but we're going to temper them first. And then we're going to add one-fourth cup of fresh-squeezed lemon juice. And then we'll be back. Okay, my uh, water, sugar, and cornstarch mixture has thickened, and it's turning a clear color. So now, and by the way, you do have to stir this constantly. 
Now I'm going to add my fourth of a cup, actually it looks like a little more than a fourth of a cup of lemon juice because I had very large lemons. Now I'm going to add the grated uh, lemon rind. That's where all your flavor is going to be, right there. Now, unlike the coconut cream pie filling and the chocolate pie filling, you don't have to worry if this comes to a boil because there, there's just no milk in it. Uh, the reason you don't want the uh, coconut cream and the chocolate cream pie to boil is because there's milk in it and you stand a chance of the milk curdling. Okay, see how thick that is? Now I'm just going to put that off the heat, turn my burner down, and we're going to temper the eggs. And you do that, of course, so the eggs don't really curdle in the uh, mixture. So I'm going to beat my eggs just a little bit. And this is three egg yolks. And I uh, reserve the three egg whites for the meringue and also the extra egg white uh, from where I use the one egg yolk in the pie crust. Alright, so I've got this beaten up a little bit. Now I'm just going to put a tablespoon in there and I'm going to beat it real quick. So we don't want those eggs to cook. At least not right now. Okay. I'm going to put another tablespoon. Real quick, beat it up. Real quick. And then I'm going to put one more, just to be sure. All right, that ought to do it right there. Now let me get my spatula. I'm going to put this back on the burner. Take that spoon out. Out, and I'm going to use my whisk and just keep beating it as you're adding the egg mixture. Just keep beating it with the whisk as you're slowly pouring the egg mixture in. Now it's actually boiling now. And so once you get the eggs in, you want to probably cook it for maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. You just want to be sure that the eggs come up to temperature. And just keep beating it the whole time with your little whisk. I'll scrape down the sides of that with my whisk. Make sure it doesn't stick on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my burner off now. And just let it cook the rest of the way as the burner is cooling down. Now, you want this hot uh, in when you pour it in the pie shell and when you put the meringue on top. Because this hot mixture will actually start cooking the meringue from the bottom. So you really do want it hot. pretty thick now. Very smooth and clear. Alright, I'm going to put this off the burner now and I'm going to get set up to make my meringue. So we'll be right back. And I forgot to tell you to put in one tablespoon of butter once your mixture has cooked. And uh, what that's going to do is just give it a, a a smoother, shinier texture. Now my burner is completely off now, but it is still hot. So I'm just going to mix in that one tablespoon of butter. Now I am going to give you this recipe in a little while since I finished the meringue. And uh, I've got it written out, so I'll give you that. Alright, that butter is all incorporated now. And now uh, we're ready to make the meringue. Now I'm going to slip the camera back. So 
and what we're going to do is beat these egg whites. Now, I don't remember if I said there were five egg whites. They're not. Oh, there's only four. One from the yolk, where I used the yolk for the pie crust, and then the three from the three egg yolks that I put into the uh, filling. So now I'm going to beat these until they just form, form soft peaks, and then we'll be back. Okay, we're back, and the um, egg whites have formed little soft peaks. And now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and use one teaspoon of vanilla, or thereabouts. And that's the end of that. One teaspoon of cream of tartar, right in there. I'm just going to start, start mixing it slowly in. Now I'm going to add the sugar a little bit at a time. one half cup of sugar, okay? Now I'm going to keep beating this on high until when I put my fingers in it and rub them together I won't be able to feel any of the grit from or the crystals from the sugar. And we'll be back. Okay, we're back and I, I've already checked. I have no crystals in here in the meringue. How do I know it's ready? That's how I know. Now, if it wasn't ready, it would be on the counter, okay? So you just see how it's all firm and stuck to the sides and the bottom. All right, we are ready to fill our pie pan now. And I have uh, left my uh, the uh, lemon filling on the burner so that it will uh, stay, you know, fairly hot. So I'm going to see if I can find something to get that out with. We'll just use this. Can't find another spatula in there, so we'll just use this. So I'll we'll just mix it around real good. And actually, my pie crust itself is still a little bit warm, so I'm going to dump this in. And this is why I really, really like the uh, a taller pie pan. First of all, I really love the crust of a pie anyway, especially if it's made with the Crisco. All right. Now, I'm ready to spread my meringue. And what I'm going to do is dip it out first all around the edges. See how firm that is? And as I'm doing that, I'm going to just lock it onto the edge. And remember, my filling now is still really, really hot. So this uh, meringue is going to start cooking from bottom. Now you really do not want to use a plastic spatula to do with your uh, meringue. And the reason for that is because they usually have, you know, even when you run them through the dishwasher, the spatulas just keep some of the oil on them, so that could cause your meringue to kind of deflate. Now see, I'm hooking it all around the edge. And I don't know any way but to use my finger, okay? Make sure every little place is connected on the edge there. Okay. So now we're ready to fill in the middle. And always when you're uh, making meringue, you really want 
to use a glass bowl and preferably one that's been run through the dishwasher so you know there's no grease whatsoever on it. So now I'm just going to bring all that in and fill in the center. We'll put I don't like to put too many squigglies on it because they get brown faster than the rest of it does. So, now see how this, this pie pan or pie plate is really deep and that, I just love that because that way my meringue isn't sticking way up on the top of it. But still I've got a lot of meringue on there. Now, Mother always smoothed hers out. She didn't like any of those little peaks on hers because she said they got brown too fast. So I'm kind of doing this like she used to do it, kind of smooth it out. All right, there you have it. All right, now we are going to put this in the oven at 375 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. And I'm going to say it's probably going to be 15 minutes because I don't have any peaks. And we'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here's the recipe for the lemon meringue pie. And this is the 1950s version. And I do think this is the original version. Move that closer. That's the crust. There's the filling. And there's the meringue. Now, it says chill three to four hours before serving. I don't think we've ever waited that long, but if you do wait that long, the pieces will come out much prettier because it might run a little bit if you cut it too soon. It needs to be completely cool. Okay, there it is. All right, we'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like when we bring it out of the oven. Let me zoom in on that. Maybe that's better. Yeah, there's the crust. There's the filling, and there's the meringue topping. All right, see you in a few minutes. All right, here's the pie, all uh, done and ready. Now, you need to leave it on the counter till it cools, you know, for probably an hour, then put it in the refrigerator for several hours. There it is. I can't wait to have some of it and see how tall that pie, pie pan is. That's great. All right. See you next time. I hope you'll try this old-fashioned recipe.